Well, it's here, isn't it? I have been very, very silent about everything. I've been silent about everything in the past couple of months. You know, I did one episode of the main event talk about Fastlane, and that was it. Afterwards, everything that has happened has happened. Everything that I predicted, everything that I mentioned is now coming into play. And we are now two weeks away. Two weeks away from the biggest event of the year. And as always, welcome to the return of the main event talk. Now, those of you that had an opportunity to see just a little preview, I said that the main event talk would return. I said that my silence will be done and I would go ahead and talk about WrestleMania because we are 13 days away from the biggest event. The main event talk is back. And now I get to unload. I get to say what I want, how I want to do it. Now, I am the main event player, the Super C himself, right back where he belongs. So while people are getting bored out of their fucking minds by listening to critics, listening to people that have their own views of WrestleMania, I'll give you my views, but the only difference between their views and my views is my views have actually happened. Okay? They've actually happened. And they, they want to go ahead and rely on other people's sources. I rely on other people's sources too, but the thing is, not everything is accurate. What I know in here and what I know in here is all I need to know. When, you've be when you become the biggest wrestling fan in the world, you don't go ahead and decide with other people and think that they're right and you're wrong. You go by what you know and you'll always know you're right. Like for instance, well, let's talk Daniel Bryan and his obscurity from the main event of WrestleMania. Personally, I'm glad he's not in the main event of WrestleMania. Why? Because it would be ridiculous to see the repeat all over again. Because even if Daniel Bryan became a part of the main event of WrestleMania, he wouldn't win. And from every other fan's perspective, it has to be believable for Daniel Bryan to beat Brock Lesnar. But that's over with and done. And now it's Roman Reigns taking on Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And is it just me? Or am I the only one seeing that Roman Reigns is... Well, he's actually getting a lot better. I mean, some of the fans are still booing him, but... He's actually getting a whole lot better. And next week on Monday Night Raw, he gets a face-to-face -face encounter with the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar in the main event. Cannot wait for that. And Paul Heyman being on the microphone, speaking his mind, saying what he wants, putting it all on the table. And you know something? And, and you got to love Paul Heyman for this. He goes ahead. Last week he was on the microphone spoke his mind, says what he wants, mentions Floyd Money Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, which, yes, we are going to have the pay-per-view at my house on May 2nd when it takes place right here at my house. And, and yes, I'm also going to have WrestleMania 31 over here in two weeks' time, 13 days, live on pay-per-view and on the WWE Network. But let me go ahead and get this out if you don't mind. Paul Heyman mentions everything, including... Brock Lesnar going to UFC, which, you know, I don't know why everyone is making such a big deal about Brock Lesnar, you know, going to UFC. First, first people all of a sudden are talking that Brock Lesnar is going to leave the WWE and go to the UFC, which we've known that for a long time. And then people start to change their minds. They say, you know what? I think Brock Lesnar could still stay in the WWE for a whole lot longer. Now, here's the thing. The first one you believe... The first one you believe, when Brock Lesnar leaves the WWE, he goes to UFC. That's believable. 
but him staying, that there's that little question in your head, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then what's the point? You know, if he's going to stay in the WWE, then what the point is him going to UFC in the first place? And then so much crap and controversy is only as only Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman could make. He made an appearance in a UFC event, I believe, just one month ago. So I'm just going to stick with what I know. And what I know is this. Brock Lesnar's leaving WWE. And he's going to UFC. That's how it goes. So if you want to believe in every other part of the story, then believe that because at the end of the day, just like every other time I've ever said, every story you believe is all nothing but garbage. The first part of the story should be the one that's real. The rest don't mean shit. So Brock Lesnar will leave the WWE. But before that happens, he must defend the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Roman Reigns. Now, it's kind of funny that there's one little part, and I'm going to bring this up, because everyone is getting their little deal saying, that, oh, Roman Reigns is not going to beat up Brock Lesnar. He, he ain't got the balls to beat up Brock Lesnar. But there is one thing that Brock Lesnar failed to mention. One thing. Now, Brock has always went up against guys like John Cena, guys like The Rock, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Kurt Angle, and many others. But think about what happened, uh, I'm going to say 11 years ago. WrestleMania 20. Do you remember Brock Lesnar having a match with someone that has the same exact move as Roman Reigns? Oh, yeah. You remember? You remember, remember? <laughs> About 11 years ago, Brock Lesnar was leaving to go to the NFL, supposedly. And he took on a man by the name of Goldberg. Goldberg, a long time ago, I have said when Brock Lesnar came into the WWE a long time ago, one day, one day, I'm going to see Brock Lesnar take on Goldberg. And we'll see who the badass is in the WWE. And then all of a sudden, 2003 comes in, and then here comes Goldberg. He comes into the WWE and dominates just like he did in WCW. And then his last match at WrestleMania would take place against Brock Lesnar. And I remember that night. I remember when Brock Lesnar took on Goldberg, and that crowd was booing the shit out of both competitors because it wasn't even a good wrestling match. Because all they did for the past five to ten minutes was... You know, put on, you know, uh, a Colin Noble tie-up every single time. And who was in the center of the ring? Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was the referee. But at the end of the match, Brock Lesnar got hit with something. Hmm. He got hit with two moves, but one move is the most effective. That move is the spear. Brock Lesnar got speared by Goldberg... He got hit with a jackhammer, one, two, three, Brock Lesnar loses to Goldberg at WrestleMania 20. So what does that tell you? While everyone believes that Brock Lesnar is going to beat the shit out of Roman Reigns, no doubt he will. But Brock Lesnar does have a weakness. Remember those broken ribs? Remember those ribs that supposedly were broken at the Royal Rumble? Roman Reigns is going to capitalize on that. And plus, he's got a spear that will go through anybody. If he could hit the spear on the Big Show, and if he could hit the spear on Mark Henry, imagine what he will do to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. So you go ahead and you give your statistics and you tell everybody that Roman Reigns ain't going to be shit against Brock Lesnar. But I guarantee you Brock Lesnar is going to take everything he can on Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns is going to rise to the top and take down... The Beast Incarnate at WrestleMania and become the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And then, of course, the whole little predictable deal where Seth Rollins gets his fucking money in the bank. He goes ahead and sends it right over to the ring, cashes it in, and everything else like that. But my outcome will be a little bit different because if Seth Rollins does attempt to go ahead and cash it on Roman Reigns... 
If Seth Rollins makes WrestleMania history, that'd be cool. But if he loses and gets hit with a spear by Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins' WrestleMania moment will go down in tubes and Roman Reigns will still have the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in his possession. And that will be it for Brock Lesnar. And the era of Reigns would begin after WrestleMania. But that's just me talking. That's just me laying the platform for everyone to look at. So let's skip the whole part about the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And let's focus on something that I'm glad is going to take place. It's been a long, long time since we've seen a ladder match at WrestleMania. And especially it's been a long time since we've seen a ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. And it's cool that we got all of these badass competitors coming in and being a part of WrestleMania and coming in and being a part of the Intercontinental Championship. But the one person that I'm glad is now a part of WrestleMania and now has an opportunity to go after the Intercontinental Championship is none other than Mr. Yes himself, Daniel Bryan. You see, this whole thing started with Wade Barrett, Bad News Barrett, if you will, and Dean Ambrose. And I made this prediction that Dean Ambrose is going to somehow lose, but somehow play this little game with Bad News Barrett. And the game turned out well, but this game had more competitors to it. How many? Let's see. You added our truth to the mix. Then you go ahead and decide to add Luke Harper to the whole deal. And then why not add an Intercontinental Champion in there? Yeah, why not bring, why not bring in Dolph Ziggler? Hmm? And then not, why not bring some other crazy lunatic individual that has been Intercontinental Champion before and I'm talking about Stardust? And then you got all the elements in the right form, but all that's left is for Daniel Bryan to be a part of it. He had been a part of several matches that involved the Intercontinental Champion. And all that needed to happen, in my prediction, and I said this, everyone's been saying that Sheamus is going to take on Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania, but I don't think that's going to happen. And I don't think it should happen. Because the word on the street that I'm hearing is that Sheamus will not appear at WrestleMania, but he will appear the day after WrestleMania. And I hope that happens because afterwards we may see a feud or a confrontation between Daniel Bryan and and Sheamus. But I'm skipping ahead of the point, uh, you know, skipping ahead to the point of what I need to talk about here. Daniel Bryan had been a part of several Intercontinental Championship matches. Now, well, not several Intercontinental Championship matches, but involved in matches involving the Intercontinental Champion. So, I said, you know what? Since Daniel Bryan is not going to be a part of the main event of WrestleMania, since he's not going to be a part of the World Heavyweight Championship, why not go after the one championship he hasn't gotten yet? He's been U.S. Champion, he's been World Champion, he's been WWE Champion, he's been WWE World Heavyweight Champion, he's been Tag Team Champions. U.S. Champion, I think I mentioned that already. So, there's only one championship that Daniel Bryan has not been able to accomplish. The championship that has been held on to by some of the greatest champions of all time, from the likes of Pat Patterson to the Rock Don Moronko, or the Magnificent Moronko to be exact, to men like Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning, Brett the Hitman Hart, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels, the People's Champion, the Rock. Why not go after the Intercontinental Champion? Why not D. Bryan get his opportunity to become a part of the elite that have held on to the Intercontinental Championship. So now, at WrestleMania, the, possibly the best ladder match in history, and it's not for a stinking briefcase this time. It's now for a championship. It's now for the Intercontinental Championship. And it's been a long time since we've seen a ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. Now, if memory serves me correctly, the last time an Intercontinental Championship matchup was defended in a ladder match? WrestleMania 10. Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon. Remember that? Two surefight Hall of Famers. Two tremendous athletes that went after the most prestigious title. One of the most prestigious titles in all of WWE, the Intercontinental Championship. And now... 
It's going to happen again at WrestleMania. It's going to be Bad News Barrett to defend the championship against Dean Ambrose, R Truth, Stardust, Dolph Ziggler, Luke Harper, and Daniel Bryan. Seven competitors in a ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. That is surely to be the show to steal all shows. And my prediction, I'm going with what I said a month ago. I said that if Dean Ambrose gets an opportunity to become Intercontinental, oh, he gets an opportunity at the championship at WrestleMania, he's going to be the one to win it. But this is going to kind of be a little bit of a conflicting deal because you've got some badass wrestlers that are going to go after the Intercontinental Championship. So in my opinion, I'm going to go with Daniel. I'm going to go with Dean Ambrose, but there's a possibility of Daniel Bryan winning it. Maybe. Or maybe Dolph Ziggler could take that chance at WrestleMania, have his WrestleMania moment. Or Stardust, or Luke Harper, or any of those individuals. But we'll see what happens at WrestleMania 31 ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, another match that I want to talk about, and I want to bring this up because we all knew it was going to happen. We knew ahead of time that it was going to take place at WrestleMania, but it took place at Fastlane first. Fastlane, Rusev supposedly beat John Cena, made him submit at Fastlane, which we all know John Cena did a Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13. Remember when Bret Hart had him in the sharpshooter and Stone Cold Steve Austin was bleeding from the head and passed out from the pain? That was it. Stone Cold Steve Austin lost the match, but he never, ever gave up. The same applies with Bone Thugs and Harmony, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but anyways, Rusev puts on the accolade or the, the whatever that move is on John Cena. And John Cena pretty much passed out from the pain and lost to Rusev at WrestleMania. So oh, lost to Rusev on Fastlane. I'm already getting ahead of myself right over here, you know. And we all knew right away that John Cena was going to take on Rusev at WrestleMania. But how will this all set up? All you got to do is convince Rusev. And then here comes Stephanie McMahon going ahead and saying all that she wants to say about you're not that important. The only way you're going to be able to be a part of WrestleMania is if you convince Rusev. Well, duh, that's exactly what he has to do anyway, stupid. So that's what he did. He goes ahead, he puts on the STF, puts it on Rusev, and then makes Lana... Lana goes ahead and decides to give him the match at WrestleMania for the United States Championship. Now, tonight, I was watching Raw, saw the whole thing, including the whole contract signing, and, you know, uh, you know, we always knew that Rusev was a little bitch, but my God, the moment he signed that contract, he went ahead and flipped the table over and tried to hit John Cena. Give me a fucking break. But what was really funny, and I think you guys probably saw this on Raw, this one part where here comes Rusev, right? Coming down, wearing a suit, and has like the whole necklace deal, you know, and he's looking all good and everything, right? Then here comes, well, Lana doesn't come down, and you can hear the crowd chanting, we want Lana, we want Lana, we want Lana. Let me tell you something. The main event and every other person that's watching on TV does want Lana. And I don't mean they want Lana as in they want to see her. They want Lana as in we want to take her to a hotel room and bang the living shit out of her and make her come in Russian while singing the national anthem, American style. But anyways, <laughs> okay, I know that was wrong for me to say that, but remember, this is a main event talk. This is my show. This is how I'm going to say it. So get used to it, please. And if you report me, I'll beat your ass. But anyways, here comes this Russian attorney. Okay, and first of all, let me tell you something. I, I see this guy. He comes out, right? All white complected with yellow glasses. Yellow. Who, who the fuck wears yellow glasses to an arena? And plus, 
oh my god, the, the guy didn't even sound Russian. He and and I even agree with Booker T when he said, "Man, he sounds like he's from Texas." Of course, no guy from Russia would sound like that. No, sounds like a fucking moron. In Italy, he, what what the fuck was he saying? <laughs> So the contract signing takes place, and it's now official at WrestleMania. It's going to be Rusev defending the United States Championship against John Cena. Now, anybody that remembers the history of the United States Championship, the title had been defended, uh, well, it's been defended many times at WrestleMania, but the first time it's ever been defended was, believe it or not, at WrestleMania 20. The United States Championship was brought in in 2003 and was defended at WrestleMania. And who wins the championship? Ironically, John Cena. He wins his first singles championship. It would be the United States Championship. And it happened at WrestleMania 20 over 11 years ago. I believe that's correct. And now John Cena once again has an opportunity to win back the United States Championship against Rusev. Will he end the undefeated streak of Rusev at WrestleMania or will Rusev take down John Cena and pretty much keep the United States title? Word is, uh, from what I understand, uh, obviously we know John Cena is going to win. It's a no-brainer. But what the other no-brainer that you know some people don't know about is that there's a possibility of Lana and Rusev possibly splitting up. So, I hope it happens, because, you know, Lana, let, let's be honest, she's a gorgeous, beautiful, sexy woman who does need to move away from Rusev for a while and kind of move on and do her own thing, if you know what I mean. To me, Rusev is only going to get better after WrestleMania. I know some people may disagree on that, but me, I see things from a different perspective. So, I say it, at WrestleMania, John Cena will win the championship once again and defeat Rusev at WrestleMania, and it's only going to get better for Rusev after WrestleMania. Trust me, I guarantee you that. Now, we go from championships to an end of a streak. For weeks, for months, Bray Wyatt has been talking in tongues and has been wanting an opportunity to go after The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And sure enough, we all knew coming in, we all knew about maybe a month back that John, uh, John Cena, that Bray Wyatt was going to go ahead and take on The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Now, nobody really believed me, but just the way Bray Wyatt was talking and just the way he sends out his message and then out comes Fastlane and then he goes ahead and says he wants The Undertaker WrestleMania. Now, the big question that some people wanted to know about was is The Undertaker in good condition? I mean, the last time he was in the ring was, um, of course, last year when he took on Brock Lesnar and the streak came to an end and he did suffer a concussion after the event was over. Now, whether it... You know, I, I know that, um, you know, we all keep up with what's been going on in the WWE. We also keep up with what's been going on with The Undertaker. He had some illness. He had some problems. But it seems now The Undertaker is in uh, pretty good condition. Uh, he was last seen with his wife, Michelle, Michelle McCool. And uh, it seems that looks like he's ready for WrestleMania. So he's ready to take on Bray Wyatt. Now, word is, The Undertaker is not going to make an appearance on Raw at all. From what I understand, I think The Undertaker will only make an appearance at WrestleMania. Um, so we'll, there's a good chance of seeing him there with Bray Wyatt. And everyone wants my opinion. Do you think Bray Wyatt is going to take take down The Undertaker? Nah. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't see that coming. And plus, we're talking about Bray Wyatt and we're talking about The Undertaker here. The way I see it... Uh, with Bray Wyatt, it's gonna kind of be it's gonna kind of be like John Cena all over again from last year's WrestleMania. I said uh, I said about a year ago that if John Cena and Bray Wyatt have their match, Bray Wyatt needs to be the one to display the show. You know, come out and do his whole thing. You know, go like this and and tell him to hit him and everything else like that. Be the showman. Come out and do what you can and intimidate the individual. And that's exactly what he did. I don't expect Bray Wyatt to win against John Cena. And sure enough, my prediction came true. 
John Cena wins at WrestleMania, and Bray Wyatt only would get better from there. So this is going to be pretty much very similar. Bray Wyatt is taking on The Undertaker now. He's not taking on Kane. He's not taking on John Cena. He's not taking on Bray Wyatt. He's, well, Daniel Bryan. He's taking on a whole different creature. Because Bray Wyatt is truly one of the most bizarre and one of the most strangest individuals that the WWE has ever seen. So what do you do with a man like Bray Wyatt? You put him up against someone that's not only more stranger than you, but someone that has been to the dark side and back. Someone that has been through every superstar in this industry when it comes to men like Triple H, Shawn Michaels, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and many others. A man who has had an unprecedented winning streak from WrestleMania 7 all the way down to WrestleMania 30 when it all came to an end. The Undertaker is truly the most respected WWE superstar of all time, one of the greatest superstars of all time. And all I expect at WrestleMania between Bray Wyatt and The Undertaker is a damn good match. Bray Wyatt is going to do exactly what I expect him to do just like last year. He's going to go ahead, he's going to put on a show, he's going to show The Undertaker what he is. But one thing that Bray Wyatt will never be is more evil than The Undertaker. The dead man has been around for a long time. And he's going to show Bray Wyatt why he is the last outlaw. He's going to show Bray Wyatt why he is big evil. He's going to show Bray Wyatt why he's the dead man. The grim reaper of the WWE. He's going to take down Bray Wyatt just like he took down every other superstar that has ever faced him at WrestleMania. So Bray Wyatt, you can reach on and tell everyone to follow the buzzards. Because while you're all left alone, bloodied, beaten, bruised, and destroyed, you look up, you see all the buzzards, and they're not following you. They're circling around you. Because you're the feeding frenzy. You're the guy that they want. And at WrestleMania, The Undertaker is going to take down Bray Wyatt. And the buzzards are not going to be following Bray Wyatt. The buzzards are going to do what they do when they see a dead carcass laid flat on the ground. Pick it up by the bones. Bray Wyatt, good luck. Because unfortunately, you're going to need it. So, we've pretty much covered everything about WrestleMania. Of course, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is taking place. A lot of superstars are going to be a part of it. And the whole I didn't get an opportunity to see the whole thing with The Miz and Miz Dow. But it seems that the relationship is now officially over. Thank God. And it seems that now... will we? You know, most people are telling me I think Miz Dow will win. You know, it's not often I made a pred make a prediction about the whole Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, but you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on record. I'm gonna go on record right here in the main event talk. I don't like Miz Dow. I don't like Miz Dow at all under any circumstances. There are people that are way better than Miz Dow, but unfortunately, I'm going to actually pick him to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I know, I know every 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 person's jaw just dropped right now when I said that, okay? Miz Dow will win, and then the Miz is gonna look like a fucking biatch at WrestleMania. And then the whole story between Miz Dow and Miz, it's only gonna get either good or worse. Or in this case, worse. But let's move on from the next thing. Another great WrestleMania match is going to take place. And it's something that I knew and everyone else knew in the past few months. Randy Orton goes one-on-one -on -one against Seth Rollins, and that's also another show, another match that's going to steal WrestleMania, just like that. And for the past few weeks, Randy Orton has been playing mind games with Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins is just playing like a little fucking baby or something like that, thinking... That he's got everything under control, everything's got his back, and every single detail, right? And then last week, Randy Orton 
goes ahead and starts telling him, I'm going to make you my bitch. And sure enough, he did at the very end of Monday Night Raw. He beat the living shit out of Seth Rollins. He took him all over the arena, took a chair, bashed him in the head, and then after that, goes to the announcer's table and hits the RKO on Seth Rollins, and then goes ahead and decides he's going to challenge him for WrestleMania. And sure enough, tonight, not only does he accept, it's going to happen. Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. But now, before I go ahead and bring up the next match, and the one match that I and the rest of the world is waiting on, let me bring up this one little part at the end of Raw, which is truly the greatest Raw moment in history. You want to know why? Randy Orton had a matchup against Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins thought he was going to be all alone, but for some strange reason, I had this strange feeling that Seth Rollins was going to go ahead and come out there, and then here comes the authority. Oh, God. Like, like that's supposed to shock me, right? Like, oh, my God, the authority is coming. Oh, come on. A blind man can see that fucking shit. So while this was all taking place, here's the authority surrounding the ring. Randy Orton with a steel chair in his hand. And he was ready to take down the authority. And then all of a sudden, just to give you an example, a little example, watch. The lights turn out, and then, bam, sting. Sting comes out side by side with Randy Orton. Oh my fucking God. That was one moment that just sent chills up and down your spine. Seeing Sting side by side with Randy Orton going up against the authority. Oh, you gotta love that, man. Which now brings me to the match that all of us are waiting to see. And I'll tell you, this is a match that took me a long time to figure out. Normally, normally a lot of people would want to see Sting come in the ring against The Undertaker. But we know about that little story. But that's going to happen until after WrestleMania. But I don't want to let the pot out of the, let the deal out of the pot if you know what I mean. So Sting and Triple H at WrestleMania. The setup was just so cool. Seeing Sting and Triple H face to face at Fastlane. And then the whole promos and the whole cuts and everything else like that. And then tonight, seeing Sting in the middle of the ring, doing the Stinger Splash, doing the Scorpion Death Drop. Sting looks better than he has been in so many years. And the crowd went completely insane. Now, the only thing that I didn't get an opportunity to see was what happened after Monday Night Raw. Luckily, I had an opportunity to see, um, I think, uh, the Pro Wrestling Spotlight had the video put out where Randy Orton and Sting were being interviewed by Michael Cole. And when Sting came out and when he spoke, oh, man, it just ugh, sends chills up and down your spine just thinking about it. And I tell you what, that's one match that a lot of people... Are waiting to see every other match at WrestleMania is going to be awesome, but this match, Sting versus Triple H, this will be the most talked-about match in the history of WWE. For years, at WrestleMania, there's always been that one match, that one that defines WrestleMania for what it is. And let me give you a few examples: WrestleMania Three, Macho Man Randy Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat for the Intercontinental Championship. That was the big highlight of the match, right? And then the whole thing at WrestleMania 25. When Shawn Michaels took on The Undertaker at WrestleMania. It was the most epic encounter, the most epic match in history. And then WrestleMania 13. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Bret Hart in a submission match. Blew the fucking roof off of that damn place. And then, of course... The two great encounters that Triple H had with The Undertaker. WrestleMania 27, and then of course, the end of an era, WrestleMania 28, Triple H versus The Undertaker. 
at WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels is a special guest referee. Every match I've ever seen has either been old school or been just a damn fight. And that's what I like to see. Fuck all the sports entertainment bullshit. I like seeing an old school wrestling match. I like seeing an old school fight. And that's what we're going to see at WrestleMania. For a fan like me and for a fan like you, I'm not talking sports entertainment, I'm talking pro wrestling. I'm talking professional wrestling. You got two guys from two different backgrounds taking on each other at WrestleMania. You got one guy, the game, the cerebral assassin, the king of kings, Triple H, who has beaten the best, who has taken on the best, winning championships, and is the COO of WWE. A sure fine Hall of Famer. And then he got on the other side, one of the most legendary figures in all of WCW, the franchise. Now they won't mention that he also came from TNA Wrestling. But me on the other hand, I'll mention it. Because he was there in 2006. Sting had shown up, won championships, and faced off against guys like the phenomenal AJ Styles. Kurt Angle. Ric Flair, I'll just bring that up. Cowboy James Storm and others. And now for the first time in a long time, Sting finally appears in the WWE and for the first time in his career, he appears on the biggest stage of them all, WrestleMania. He's appeared in many great events. He's appeared in many Starcade events in WCW. He's appeared in many of TNA Bound for Glory events on pay-per-view. But Bound for Glory and Starcade combined could not match up the level of WrestleMania. Let's be honest. Let's call it like we see it. You can put any big event from any wrestling organization and they will pale in comparison to WrestleMania. Sting is in a different platform. He is not in any of these, I can't say low class or or anything else like that, but he's in WrestleMania. He's in the Super Bowl, okay? The Super Bowl of professional wrestling. That's what I've called it, and that's the way I still see it, and I feel, and I know you guys agree with it too. This is our Super Bowl. And at WrestleMania, Sting versus Triple H, I don't give a rat's ass if I'm for Triple H or for Sting. Personally, I am for Sting. But all I expect is damn well a fight, a wrestling match. Someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. And at WrestleMania, Sting is going to make the game say it's over. At WrestleMania... It's showtime, folks. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this very special edition of the Main Event Talk. And I've been waiting a long time to speak my mind and say what I need to say. And, well, here it is. And we are 13 days away from WrestleMania. And, of course, the main event is going to have WrestleMania at his house. I'm going to have the barbecue ready. I'm going to get the beer flowing. I'm going to get all the sodas. I'm going to have everything set up and prepared for WrestleMania like I do every single year. This is this is one event that I love every year. Next is the Royal Rumble. Next is Survivor Series. Next is SummerSlam. WrestleMania is the event where everyone, and this is the truth, everyone becomes a wrestling fan and every organization is going to take advantage of this and not just the wwe but ring of honor they're going to take advantage of this lucha underground is going to take advantage of this tna wrestling is going to take advantage of this everyone is going to get involved in this whole thing with wrestlemania so it's going to be great two weeks away live on pay-per-view or you can get it on the wwe network for only 9.99 and I still have not got my WWE Network for $9.99 on my phone. But we'll get to that. So that's going to do it for this edition of the Main Event Talk. I'm going to go ahead and go back inside and watch the replay of Raw one more time and see Sting again. Now, 
before I go ahead and go. Don't forget to follow the main event on Facebook, facebook.com slash main event player. You can also find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash at main event player. I think that's correct. And you can also find me on Instagram. I'm putting out a bunch of posts, a bunch of pics, including everything that took place tonight on Raw. And a bunch of other stuff about WrestleMania, of course. Can't wait for that. So it's going to be tremendous to check out what's going to take place at WrestleMania in two weeks' time. So, guys, I'm encouraging you, and I'm telling you this right now. Call your local cable company or subscribe to the WWE Network and check out WrestleMania four hours. Actually, if I count, if I count this correctly, it's actually going to be six hours. Six hours of WrestleMania. And two hours of it is going to be the uh, the kickoff show. The rest, WrestleMania starts, I think, at 6 o'clock to be exact. Yeah. Over here it starts at 6 o'clock, then it ends around 10. So get ready, guys. The road to WrestleMania continues. The main event cannot wait to check out WrestleMania. You guys have your predictions. I got my predictions. WrestleMania 31, it's going to be the fucking shit. I can't wait for it. So thank you for watching and... I also want to mention, don't forget to check out all of my other videos here on YouTube. Subscribe to the Main Event Talk and hear everything that I got to say about WrestleMania and more. And plus, I also want to give out my congratulations to the latest inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame, a true living legend, one of my all-time favorites, the living legend himself, Larry Zabisco, is now a part of the Hall of Fame, alongside with the Macho Man Randy Savage, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Bushwhackers, and uh, Medusa, or Alundra Blaze. And, uh, and I also have a lot I want to say about the Hall of Fame. So be ready for that. And uh, once again, thank you for watching. And if you guys think that the main event talk is over, you're out of your fucking mind if you believe that. Why? Because I can and I want to. Any questions, enough said. 13 days. WrestleMania, Levi Stadium. It don't get no better than that.